What's up guys? So this video is probably going to end up being pretty short. I've been sick this week and didn't want to talk and make videos and everything, but wanted to get you guys caught up on where we're at and uh, keep going from there. So let's see what we did. and added the other lacing tubes for the back of this to support this whole side of the car where the shock mount is. I would have liked to have tied a tube from this side down into that junction down here, but this fuel cell is just super wide. I kind of wanted to leave it open just in case he does do rear steer. If I put a tube here and that tire ends up coming in contact with that tube, it's just gonna be a pain and we're gonna have to cut it out in the long run anyway. So I left that out. This will be plenty strong. Kind of had to do these tubes bent to go around the radiator on that side. I'm probably gonna do the panel to where it's like a wheel well. So the arch will be, you know, in here and I'll probably tab off this tube because that tube is in plane with all the rest of these. Still kind of playing around with seat mount location. The driver's seat is on sliders now, so the customer came out, we repositioned where it was at, and then he's coming out again on Wednesday. So we're gonna check position again, make sure it's good before I do the final revision of the seat mounts. This side, same thing, just kind of tacked in these mock-up seat mounts. As far as the transfer case shifter linkage goes, it took me some time to kind of figure out the way that I wanted to do it. The pieces that go into it are kind of hard to find. I had the option of buying the Universal Atlas uh, hard mount like shifter linkage kit and it was like $210. I don't really want to spend $210 just to get like several little parts and pieces that I need out of that kit. And then I planned on making my own handles and everything. I ended up finding on McMaster car, they have the little Heim joints for like 10 bucks a piece. I need two uh, half 20 little Heims. That's what threads onto the Atlas. So as you can see, I just used two half 20 Heims, my own little clevis and then linkage going into these little pivots which the levers get welded on to these points i had some mock-up levers on there to kind of get a feel for how the shifter shifts and everything and i had to play around with this spacing right here because 
where your pivot is and where the linkage mounts, the closer together that separation is, the longer throw the lever is going to have where the more you space it out, the less throw. So I had to kind of play around with the spacing right here of the pivot to get the right amount of throw that I wanted. Kind of shaped around this tube because when it goes into low, it goes back and when it goes into high, it comes forward. So it gets pretty close to this tube right here. But what I did is I just made these tabs, piece of one inch tube with eighth inch caps on both sides drill do a 3 8 bolt that goes through the whole thing and then these are just some nylon washers for it to pivot off of and i'm going to end up coming off with a tube off of both of these at an angle to over here and then bending straight up and down over here that way the two transfer case levers sit right here rather than being like in front of the corner of this seat and then of course his doubler shifter just mounts right off of the top of that. So that's simple. Trying to reuse as many parts of this car as possible rather than making everything new. So we'll just keep the same lever for that. This was his old sidewinder shifter out of his old car. So we're just reusing that again. Just simple little mount. All the sheet metal for the center console is gonna cover all this. So you'll just see where this part comes up. And then my plan is to do a console covering this part of the shifter all the way back. We may do some cup holders, probably a switch panel will get put into that. And then that tubing will tie back into the bottom of the chassis right there, or the back of the chassis. And then for the center console, my plan is to come flat with the sheet metal down here. And then up at the top, at this angle, I'm gonna have the sheet metal come flat right here, have his gauges in that part. And then we'll make the top part come up flat. And then that part of the dash will be removable. And then the sheet metal coming up into this will be broke up and Zeus tabbed on the front side right there. And then this side of the dash will come out kind of at this plane of this tube and then come down. So it'll be kind of spaced out on this side a little more than the driver's side because passenger feet can be over here. Um, the plan is he wants kind of a glove box set up somewhere in the corner. He doesn't want to put it over here because that's going to block visibility to the right front tire. But the plan is kind of to do door kind of in this plane and then a little compartment right in here to store, you know, gloves and maybe some goggles and stuff like that. And then down here, we got the carrier bearing mocked up. I just tacked it together. I'm gonna to take it over to the drive shaft shop and have them weld it. And then that way I'll be able to give them measurements for my front and rear drive shafts. This carrier bearing is gonna be pretty tight right here, but it clears just barely over that heim. And then at full droop and everything, front drive shafts clear. Still clears exhaust. I'm reusing about from here to about here of the exhaust that came off the old car. That way the O2 sensor is still there. Less exhaust work that I have to do. Then on this side of the car, got the pedal mocked up right there. Still haven't decided if I wanna do a fabricated new pedal or if that pedal is gonna work. It's not the best looking pedal, but it'll work. So we ended up recessing the floor uh, for your heels to sit down in. Makes the seat a little more comfortable to sit in. But then you can kind of see the profile of the side of the console is gonna come down and be as far over as possible to give you more leg room on this side. The console won't be symmetrical because of the glove box compartment on the other side, but I think it'll work out to be a little more comfortable this way. So this winch is just an absolute monster on here. It pretty much covers up the whole grill, but I went ahead and narrowed the grill so that the headlights can sit inside of these two tubes. Um, the 
hood is going to end up getting trimmed to about this point because this tire at full lock and full bump will hit the corner of the hood so we're going to trim the hood go up and then leave this part there that way the wheel well kind of comes up and then comes into the corner there but I'm gonna recommend that this customer gets a smaller winch for up front. I think it'll look a lot better, but for right now, we're just reusing what he has. He's coming on Wednesday, so I'm gonna talk to him about some kind of like bull bar or what, what kind of style thing on the front he wants. But the fair lead on this is gonna come out the bottom. That way he can use a suck down on this. And then if he does need to pull forward, he can just run the cable forward out this way. So for right now, that's where we got to on this thing. This is gonna be a super short video, but I wanted to at least get a short video done rather than nothing. That way we can keep pushing on videos and uh, keep moving forward on this thing. So thanks for watching the update on this thing. Keep it classy and I'll catch you guys next week. Mm -hmm.